Hello. This week's paper review is dedicated to the midweek internationals with some tasty matchups to savour. First up, England Denmark. While the English press got worked up over young Jack Wilshire for the Danes, it was all about their teen prodigy, Christian D. Eriksson, or Christian D. Greatest, according to Danish paper Extra Bladded. Must be a student publication with a name like Extra Bladded. This man looks like he's just bumped into something. Not surprised in those sunglasses. Anyway, inside the paper says, unfortunately, we didn't taste victory this evening, but Eriksson was worth the ticket price on his own. Meantime, here's another Danish paper, BT. Eriksson steals the show, they say. He's our messy. Bit rash, that, from the Danish. And inside, they get rasher. Frank Lampard, Wayne Rooney and John Terry are among the world's most famous and beloved soccer stars, they say. Yep, no argument there. It's too early to brag, but based on Wednesday's performance, our national team is set for great things with Ericsson. Oh, going out on quarterfinals sounds more likely with that surname. Anyway, that's enough for Danish headlines for now, as they say at Raisin Pastry Weekly. Elsewhere this week, uh, the real Messi, of course, was in action in Geneva in that Argentina-Portugal game, a game that the uh, European papers did their best to turn into a giant mano-a-mano -mano showdown for the title of world's snazziest players between these two fellows, Argentina's Leo Messi and Portugal's Cristiano Ronaldo. How did it go? Well, they both scored. The match finished 2-1 to Messi's Argentina. So El Mundo Deportino says it's a slap from Messi. Leo sets up the first goal like a god, scores the second, and seals his fifth triumph over Christian. Oh, impressive stuff. But wait, here comes Madrid's marker. Yes, Argentina beat Portugal 2-1, they say, but Messi only showed up when Ronaldo got subbed off, and until then, Portugal dominated. And so on and so on and so on. As L'Equipe puts it, truly, this game is endless. Now, speaking of L'Equipe, there was much excitement this week in France after their 1-0 win over Brazil at the Stade de France in Paris. The latest step this in Laurent Blanc's reboot of Les Bleus. L'Equipe says it gets better and better. Brazil playing most of the game with 10 men after Hernandez was sent off for a De Jong-style challenge. And it wasn't a magic night, admits L'Equipe. And we can't be sure if this was really Brazil. The game arranged after a phone call from George Ware, apparently. But it is still, says the paper, a prestigious result and full of promise. The new French jerseys going down a treat too. Here they are, and particularly Hugo Loris's here. Ideal whether you're between the posts or bathing in Deauville, circa 1910. French. While on the subject, anyway, of the French game, a quick update on last week's story about Chambéry, the French non-league side from the Alps, who made it all the way to the quarterfinals of the French Cup by beating three Ligue 1 teams in a row. Presumably now they're going to stuff it up completely, though, because they've drawn a Ligue 2 side in the quarters. Only three top-tier teams left in it, admittedly, as L'Equipe says. La Coupe. C'est l'anti bling bling. Angers is the team that Chambéry will be facing. No word here on how they got to the quarterfinals, but then, of course, they don't look back in Angers. Uh, with that, it's on to the week's other glamour international, Germany-Italy. Rematched this for the 2006 World Cup semi-final and played as it was at the very same Westfalon Stadium where the Azuri broke home hearts back in 2006. It all set up nicely for the Germans to finally get some revenge. Not just, indeed, for 2006, but also for the 1970 semi-final, the 1982 World Cup final and so many other matches. Germany, in fact, never having beaten Italy in a competitive encounter. Well, things started well enough for the Mannschaft when they grabbed the lead through a beautifully crafted Ursel to Müller to close a move. But sure enough, the Azuri got their equaliser in the final minutes through Giuseppe Rossi, the boy from Brooklyn. German papers distraught. Where is our revenge for 2006? Says Express. Yogi, warum können wir die nicht weg noodlen? says Built, where noodlen is both slang for beat them and also a clever culinary dig, sort of when are we going to get pasta the Italians? <laughs> puns with puns, whatever next. Gazetta, though, of course, delighted. It's the Italy we like. It's a great day for our sport, they say. Certainly a step up from drawing with the Kiwis. 1-1 one, one away to the third best side in the world, although, to be fair, it was an American who saved us from the Germans, and it's not the first time that's happened. <laughs> for you, Gazetta, the war reference is never over. Our paper review, though, very much is, though, for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back next Friday with Champions League action, so I hope you'll be joining us then. Goodbye.